Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them in a little bit. It's been a while since I stood in this spot, but we're back. It's time to get back to business. I've been on vacation for the last month or so up in Maine. If you are interested in seeing any of those videos, they're on the Logan and Bobo channel, somewhere linked up here. Uh, we spent like a good portion of the summer, at least half of July and half of August up there in Maine. So I've got a fair amount of content there if you're interested in seeing that. Anyway, it's getting back into business season. So I've got some things on the printers right now that are going to help me with that, or at least I hope help me with that. It's the farm loop system from 3D Farmers. I've got the A1 mini version printing out now. And of course I've got the P1P in the shop. So I've got the P1P version printing out as well. But I have more of the A1 Mini, so I figured it might be more beneficial to start with those machines and see how that goes versus starting with the P1P. Although I have seen some pretty promising videos from my friend Sam over at Samcraft. He's been sharing some behind the scenes stuff with me related to the P1P and P1S version of the farm loop system. So pretty hopeful, I guess, of how that one's going to go. But again, I wanted to start with the A1 mini version because I have so many more of those machines. If you're not familiar with how the system works, it's got a little scoop or a bucket looking thing on the front of the print head that waits for the bed to cool down after your print is finished. And then it kind of scoops the print off of the bill plate into a bucket or in my case, I guess onto the floor right now. And then it starts up on that same print or whatever print you have in line next to go. So instead of you having to be in the same place as the printer to start the prints over and over again or unload the build plate, the system kind of does it for you. From what I've seen from Sam's videos that he sent me on the A1, it works all right for the taller stuff, but for the smaller items, the things that I mostly print, it has a little bit of trouble at least on the A1 or A1 mini build plates because it can't do what I'll call crack the build plate where it lifts up or breaks the prints free first. So the P1P version is where I'm really hoping is going to bring some more benefit to my workflow this holiday season. As of right now, they only have this system for the Bamboo Lab P1, A1, and X1 series of 3D printers, but I'm hoping that maybe they'll bring it to some of the other printers in the print firm, like the Flashforge 85M series, or maybe even the Cobra S1 from Anycubic. Whether you're somebody who's got years of experience in the craft or somebody brand new to creating your own products, PCBWay offers a wide variety of different materials and prototyping methods to help you get your project to the next level. Have a part that's already made for 3D printing? Send it off to PCBWay and let them do their magic, printing it in a wide variety of different materials such as SLS, MJF, FDM, or even send it off to get injection molded for a fraction of the cost of the competitors. Have a part that would be better fit for CNC machining? PCBWay also offers CNC machining services in aluminum, brass, stainless steel, and even titanium to get you the best quality part for your project. Head on over to PCBWay.com, upload your model, get a free instant quote today, and let PCB way, take your project to life. And it is coming up to the holiday season. I know it's the end of August, beginning of September, but last year I kind of fell short. If you watched any of the videos from last year on this channel, it's kind of when I started on Amazon and I wasn't really prepared for honestly how well Amazon was going to do in the holiday season. And I fell short. So I don't want to do that again this year. I kind of want to, you know, at least try to maintain some sort of inventory level at Amazon. So that's kind of what I've been doing today off camera is packing some dumbbells up for Amazon. As some of you may know, the dumbbell business card holder was kind of my best seller last year and I fell short on Amazon anyways. Etsy, I was able to maintain shipping the items out because they're here with me. But for Amazon, I use Amazon FBA for a specific reason. And that's because I don't really want to be tied down to here all the time. But for Amazon, I've kind of maintain that whole use Amazon FBA because they offer it. And even though I'm paying, you know, 40% of my sales, 30, 40% of my sales to Amazon for handling all of those transactions, it's kind of worth it to me because I was able to enjoy my summer with my boy, Bo. We went up to Maine for almost two months. If you add all of the vacations that we took together. So I had a really great summer. And to me, that's more worth it than sitting here in my garage and sending out Amazon and Etsy orders. So that's why I use Amazon. I know I've had a lot of comments down in the comment section asking why I don't send things to my customers through Amazon. And there's a couple of reasons. 
One of them being, I don't want to. I'd rather send a big bulk shipment to Amazon and let them handle all of the orders as they come in because I don't really know about them. I just kind of see money coming in and Amazon handling the orders and what's better than that. But number two, Amazon also offers prime shipping when you send items into an FBA warehouse. So if you're not familiar with how Amazon works, I have a full video called Amazon FBA for 3D printing that I will link down in the description below as well as up above here somewhere so you can click on and watch the whole thing. But essentially, if you send your products into Amazon, to an Amazon FBA warehouse, they will send your orders out to your customers without you really even noticing. And the customers get the Amazon Prime one to two day free shipping, all that good stuff. And you don't really have to worry about anything. If you choose to do Amazon by yourself, they have a pretty strict shipping policy. And if you fall behind on that just by a day, it marks it as a late shipment and it kind of screws up your whole Amazon seller rating. So I've just kind of gone into Amazon from the get-go is using Amazon FBA. So I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. I can kind of do my thing in the background. Amazon is just another way of getting that extra income in from stuff that I'm just going to sell anyways, but I'd rather have them do the shipping and handling and all that good stuff. So that's why I use Amazon. If you want to get into that again, Amazon FBA for 3D printing linked above and below somewhere in the video. And speaking of ignoring things you're supposed to be paying attention to while you're on vacation, my mini split unit was leaking while I was on vacation. I don't know for how long because it was two weeks the last time I went away. And when I came back, uh, this whole shelf that may or may not be on the camera right now was covered in water. I think I have video somewhere of the mini split dripping water. Maybe some pictures of the unit being covered in water. But essentially, this place was a wood shop before I turned it into a 3D print farm or a 3D printing business. And I wasn't very good at cleaning out the mini splits. So over the last year and a half, while it's been a 3D print farm, I've kind of been neglecting the cleaning of the inside of the head unit because the year and a half prior to this, it was... You know, like I said, just a wood shop and a lot of sawdust apparently accumulated inside of there. And yikes, if you if you see the picture that appears on screen at some point, uh, it was pretty dirty. So don't uh, don't neglect cleaning your mini split units, if especially if they're in an environment where there might be sawdust from time to time, because they get dirty. And it's not just the filters like I clean the filters pretty frequently, but the Inside of the trap, the, the water collector area, I guess the drain area, was super dirty, filled with a lot of different particulates and stuff that shouldn't be in there. So definitely keep up on your mini split maintenance or you might end up with dripping water into your space. Aside from fixing the mini split when I got back from vacation the other day, uh, I ran out of bubble bags, which is primarily what I use to send my stuff to Amazon. I get those now from theboxery.com, I think is the website. Boxery, The Boxery, they're a shipping supply store. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're probably the place that a lot of the places on Amazon get their things from and then mark the prices up a little bit, store them in an Amazon warehouse like I was just talking about, and then are able to get them to you at a little bit of a quicker shipping time than places like The Boxery. But they have tremendous pricing on some of their items. I was able to get... 200 of the seven by eight and a half bubble bags, not the mailers, but the bags that I store the products in for Amazon or what I use to put the products in before they go into the bubble mailers. I think 200 of them was $52 with free shipping. And I believe I was paying somewhere close to 32 or $34 for a hundred of them on Amazon. So if you're interested in checking out some new shipping supplies or a place to get your shipping supplies, check out theboxery.com. If I'm remembering that correctly, if if I misspoke, just check the description down below. Uh, I'll put it up on screen too, so there's no confusion. But I've ordered from them twice now. I think I've got four or five hundred of the bubble bags, and then five hundred or a thousand of those little three by three inch bags that I use to store 
the little screws for the sander mounts in. And I don't think it was more than $100 for the order of the bubble bags or the little three by three bags. And again, it's free shipping, just like Amazon would be. It is a little bit slower than Amazon. So if you're in a, you know, a tight bind, Amazon's still your best bet. And I've got links to those in the description below as well. But the boxery.com, that's pretty much been my place for all stuff shipping related. Uh, unless I'm, you know, again, in a bind and I need stuff in a couple of days, then I'll go through Amazon. But yeah. Definitely check them out if you're looking for stuff at a good price, maybe not in one to two days, but definitely at a very good price for both orders. No affiliate links or anything associated with them, but I do have them linked down in the description below if you want to check them out. Aside from that, I'm just continuing on with the prints for the farm loop system on the A1 mini system. When this one is done, I'm going to start them up for the P1P. Like I said, the ones for the P1P seem to be the best that they have so far essentially it's got a little part that uh, mounts down at the bottom of the p1p so the whole build platform will move down and it will crack the build plate lift up on the build plate anyways and it's got something in the back to prevent the plate itself from actually lifting up so it just kind of flexes it and breaks your part completely free from the build plate. My buddy Sam over at Samcraft has sent me some behind the scenes videos that he's been taking while he's doing his test with his P1S and it looks pretty promising. Uh, he's completed an entire night worth of printing. So I think six or seven prints in a row without him having to be there. Granted, he's only had one part per build plate, but regardless of if it's one part, two parts, three, four parts, you kind of get the idea. It'll crack the build plate. I think it does it five or six times to make sure that the parts are broken loose. And then it moves the print head forward with the little cloud pressure thing on the front of it. And it kind of just pushes your stuff off into a bin, restarts the prints, and you don't even have to be there. Would I recommend not being there the whole time, like going on vacation and just kind of letting the thing go with, you know, one or two AMS systems? Probably not, just in case anything goes wrong. But, you know, if you're going to go to sleep at night and you want to batch out a box of parts or, you know, go the whole day, two days, maybe batching out a box of parts, I definitely think it's worth giving it a try. So that's why I've got the A1 mini system going. I've got the P1P that's going to finish up on the other half of what the A1 mini over here is doing. The 85X is printing out third part for it, which is the pusher for the front of the A1 Mini. I'm going to give it a try, and uh, I guess I'll kind of show you how it works in the next video, because obviously this one's going to run too long if I finish it off in this one. But when this one is finished and this one is finished, I'm going to start all these machines up, or at least the ones that I can, with the version for the P1P, so I can get that system installed and kind of see how that one works. I've got the parts for the P1P printing on the P1P behind me because the only other machine that can actually print that is the Cobra S1. And I was having a little bit of a difficulty getting the little tiny parts up from here to print on the S1. The cryo grip plate on the P1P just seems to stick a little bit better. So got them printing on the P1P should take about seven hours. That one will get assembled in the next video. You should see it in a couple days. But for me, it'll be probably tomorrow when I get it done. This part I had printed already, but as you can see, the little nubs on the front of it broke off. Not really sure what happened there, probably due to the print orientation, but I don't really see a better way to print this. So I'm going to try to reprint it again and hope for the best. That's where I'm going to wrap this one up, though. Hopefully it's not too boring for you guys. Just a little insight into what I've been doing since I got back, getting some Amazon orders packed up. Got a couple of orders for Etsy packed up. I've started to migrate some of my stuff back towards the main Etsy store. A couple of videos back, I did mention that I wasn't going to be posting stuff or selling stuff on Etsy that I didn't personally design myself. You know, 50-50, I guess, is where I'm going moving forward because, you know, you can only design so many things in so much time, so screw it. You all can have your opinion. I don't really care. The models are out there and they're licensed in a way that I'm allowed to sell them. You're allowed to sell them. Everybody's allowed to sell them. So I figure I might as well take advantage of some of the things that I was selling previously. I don't know how much new stuff I'm going to be adding that's not personally designed by me, but why would I take the stuff off that's doing well? That just doesn't make any sense. Anyway, we will figure out this farm loop stuff in the next video. Take care, folks.